Good morning. I'm looking for Emily. This is Emily. Hi, Emily. How you doing? This is Rob calling. I met you at the uh, New Year's Eve party. Uh, hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, you gave me your number, and I'm sorry it took so long to call you back, but I had the number on a piece of paper, and it was crumpled up and in my pants, and I've been looking all over for for the last few days, and uh, I, I, I thought I'd give you a call today. I found it last night, and I didn't want to call you too late. Ah, uh, you say your name was, what did you say your name was? I'm sorry. Rob. Rob. Yeah. I met you at the party, and I thought maybe if you're not doing anything this weekend or next uh, weekend, we could get together. Oh, my God, the party. <laughs> yeah, was that a great time or what? Oh, uh, yes, I definitely had a great time. All right, wonderful. So did I. You were a lot of fun. Well, um, what, what exactly do you look like? Excuse me? What do you exactly look like? I actually uh, met a lot of people that night, and I'm... Well, you yeah. don't remember me? Uh, I... Uh, Mm. I'm six foot three, uh -huh. and weigh about 195 pounds, uh -huh. and I've got uh, blonde hair, shoulder length. Really? I can't believe you don't remember me. We we're like we we're making out. Oh! Uh, How could you not remember me? Well, it was a little bit of a fuzzy evening there. But oh my God! You sound like something I would definitely. I mean, I have a boyfriend and everything, so it's. I wasn't really, you know, in that state of mind to be you know, looking for someone. <laughs> but you sound uh, definitely like someone I would remember. Well, you had a boyfriend. Where was your boyfriend New Year's Eve? Oh, uh, he's uh, visiting parents out of town. Yeah. So can you just jog my memory a little bit more? Well, we're, we're making out like in... in God, I was making out with you. Yeah. I'm not really like that, I swear. Well, God, I thought you were just having a great time with me. I'm sure. I was you up. said you wanted me to get give you a call and we'd get together. Uh, well, I'm very glad that you called. Um, take your word for that. <laughs> I do have a boyfriend, though. What, what do you do? Oh, I, I play baseball. Really? Uh-huh. Professionally? Well, yeah, we went through this. Okay, so you, wait a minute. So you said that you're, 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 can you just tell me what you look like again? I'm sorry. Six foot three. Six foot three. I've got blonde hair. I weigh 195 pounds. Really? Oh. Um. Sounds really good. <laughs> So what do you say? Um, hey, why not? Absolutely, why not? I'm, I'm sure we had a great time. <laughs> uh, my boyfriend will never know. Well, Emily? Yeah? It's Lamont and Tonelli calling on KSJO Radio. What? Your Peggy said to give you a call. What? It's a Dirty Friday. Oh, <laughs> wow. Glad the sensor was there. <laughs> That's the second half of that. Well, you know one thing. Yeah. She's a screamer. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, oh, I don't know. Wow. If, 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 if the boyfriend is listening, don't worry. She wasn't making out with this guy, but if she was, she would have met him. <laughs> Hello? Good morning. I'm looking for Brittany. Please. Yes. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Brittany. How are you doing? Uh, this is uh, Vince uh, Schmegema calling from the uh, hotel in Tahoe. Mm-hmm. And I'm, oh, I'm calling in regards to the dispute we have with your bill here. Yes. Um, what, what seems to be the problem? I already spoke with someone, like, I don't know, let me think, it's Friday. I spoke with someone, like, two days ago, and I straightened the whole thing out. And what happened was... Uh, all right, there was something that went on in my room, uh, double, uh, double occupancy. I um, was with some other person, a uh, girlfriend in a room, and something was broken, and I sp already spoke with someone. It had nothing to do with me. And, well, okay, uh, now now you're referring to the fact that, I see, I'm just going over some notes here. I'm the, uh, I'm the day manager, and I got to work, and I'm taking care of some problems. Now, okay. your, your, your visa account mm 
-hmm. has been charged for the, the damage to the room. Now, that's correct, right? That's correct, but I'm waiting for that to get taken off my bill. Now, okay. now you're saying that someone else damaged the room, but you were staying with this person. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, that's true. Okay. It's and, a co-worker. And, and, okay, now her name is Kim, and you gave yeah, us her number as well? Yeah, they have all, you know... Um, well, yeah. you see, what here, here's the story, okay? Brittany, we called your friend Kim yesterday. One of the workers did up in reservations. Mm -hmm. And we, we normally don't do this. This is for basically for you to sort out, okay? Yes. Now, what we did is we called Kim, and we, we said that you had reservations about paying this bill because you didn't do the damage. That's true. Okay. Now, she denies that she did the damage to the room. And as a result, you have the, the damage guaranteed on your visa card because you were the one that used your card for the room. So, but first so, of all, I don't, I mean, it, okay. So, so, Brittany, you're responsible for the damage. And she's, she's actually saying that she didn't damage it. You were the one that damaged it. Now, I don't know what's going on between the two of you, but we need the money to pay for the repairs to the room. What? What I understand is that the bed was broken. Yes. And the thing is, I don't even know. Maybe that bed was broken even when we got there, but that's... that's no, that bed was point. not broken when you got there. Our rooms are, are top-notch. There are two double beds, and I had one, and she had the other bed. Yeah. I went out. I wasn't even there. I come back, and she is there, passed out. I mean, I, I don't even want to go into it. I mean, I you know, um, I don't know what she said, but I'm not a person that would... Well, she's the one who said that you're the one who broke the bed. Well, that's... That's I haven't even spoken to her. I mean, it's. I didn't even know what kind of a person she was. When I, she's a coworker, and I went on a trip with her. I really didn't know what kind of person she was. So what do you mean you don't know what kind of person she was until you got on the trip? I guess I should have. <laughs> so what, what happened? I guess I should have gotten to know. I, mean, I don't know. It's just. So maybe we can help you out here. So what happened? You got back to the room. Thing. I went. I thought it would be a nice thing. Christmas break. Go on a vacation with someone. Yeah. And sometimes you just don't know what kind of a person someone is. And mm -hmm. we were... We were there, and I could just kind of tell when we were getting there that she probably wasn't someone I was going to hang out with. And I went out, and she went out, and we said we would, you know, see each other the next day, and we had some plans and things like that. And yeah. when I come back, came back to the room, there are people passed out in the room, passed yeah. out like they had been drinking uh -huh. in the room. Now, I don't know what went on, and then I get, it was bad enough, believe me, I had to stay there for a couple more days with her, which it was hard enough to even stay out of her way. Uh -huh. She was like, I don't even want to get into what was going on in that room. Well, but what happened? Well, that's the next. I'll get some other charges on my visa bill from you guys. All I'm saying is that you should talk to her. That's all. We've I already talked to her. She said she had nothing to do with it. Oh my god. Oh my. I just can't even. I can't even get over. Well, all listen. I know is there were all types of people, just like young and old, in my room when I came home. And it was it was actually scary, and I'm just lucky I didn't get stuff ripped off in my room because well, I, mean, Brittany, I trusted a friend to just Brittany, live a Brittany, normal Brittany, life. Brittany, Brittany, Brittany let, let me just there. let me just say this: it's it's what? guaranteed on your card. And Kim said to give you a call this morning. It's Lamont Antonelli on KSJO. Well, You're on the radio. It's Dirty Friday. Good morning. Good morning. Kim said, on the radio now. What kind of person is she again? <laughs> uh -oh. What kind of people were passed out in your room? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Kim said she wanted to dick with you on Dirty Friday. She said she'll pay the damages. She knows she she knows she knows ruined the uh, the bed. But she wanted to give you a little <laughs> jolt first. Oh, my God. And she's listening right now. Do you have anything to say to your coworker? Um, the person you think so highly of. I guess I'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> you hold on the line, okay? We're going to set you up with a little something. <laughs> I had no idea what kind of person I went on the wow. I don't even want to know her. <laughs> and I didn't even realize that that was their relationship. I thought maybe they were like better friends or something. Oh, that is beautiful. I didn't realize they were just kind of work acquaintances. Dirty Friday, Raymond, Sting and Burning, 1-800-575-KSJO. Who do you want to get? We'll burn them for you this morning. Wow. God, it's great to be back with Dirty Friday. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. I'm looking for uh, Anna, please. Uh, that, this, this is me. Hi, Anna. How are you this morning? Good. This what is, can I do for you? This is Death Sergeant Dick Tingle calling from the department. Uh, yes, sir. And I'm calling in regards to, is it Lionel? Sir, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, now who is okay. Lionel? Now, how, how do you know Lionel? That's my boyfriend. Lionel's your boyfriend? Uh, yeah. Is he okay? 
Uh, yes, ma'am, but we've arrested him on a host of charges this morning, and that's why I'm calling you, because he gave us your number. Oh, no. Um, uh, okay, well, uh, what happened? Well, it seems uh, we arrested him for driving without a license this morning, and he was driving a, uh, a 1997, which is registered to you. Um, now, is that your car? Uh, yeah, yes, sir, it is. So, you, did, did you know that Lionel did not have his license? Uh, I, I knew that, yeah. And you authorized him to drive your car? Uh, well, uh, not exactly, sort of, <laughs> sort of. Sort of, but not exactly. Well, uh, he's my boyfriend. Uh, most of the time. <laughs> because, because what? What? Most of the time. Well, no, he, I, uh, he's, he's, he's my boyfriend. He's my boyfriend. So what happened here is because he took your car with your with your authorization, you're liable for some of the damages. Uh, um, because he was what? involved. He was involved with. Uh, he hit a pole this morning. The roadways are very slippery, and some damages were done. To some uh -huh. public property. Yeah. Um, when we pulled him over, we realized he didn't have a license. Uh -huh. And we did a search of the car, and some cannabis was discovered in the vehicle. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and he told us, when we questioned him on who the cannabis belonged to, he said it was yours. Oh, what a dumb... Sh well, I don't smoke dope, okay? Uh -huh. And... I think maybe he does sometimes. Um, so you're telling me the cannabis isn't yours? I don't think so. No. So the the, the cannabis belongs to your boyfriend Lionel? What a dumb shit. Um. I well. I guess. I guess it does. I guess it does. Well, it's either his or yours. Who does it belong to? Well, it's not mine, sir. Well, there's another charge he's up on. Uh. It sounds like it. I, I think he might be. Well, ma'am, ma your boyfriend Lionel is in a heap of a lot of trouble this morning, and um, we'd like you to come down and identify your car, and also fill out some paperwork because you're liable for quite a few quite quite a few bills. Well, what if what if he's not my boyfriend anymore? Uh, how about I just get my car back? What do I need to do get to get my car back? Well, that's well, all I need what, is my you, car back. So what, what do you mean, that's all you need? What, are you, are you saying screw Lionel and... Well, I'm saying he might learn his lesson if he, if he handled this on his own. Uh, I think... Uh, so he, what, you're going to say that he stole your car so you're not liable for the bills? Well, I think he kind of did. Uh, uh, steal. I think that's what he did. Stupid shit. Yeah, I, I think he... Uh, I th so, so all you're concerned about is getting your car back? Yeah, yeah. How do I get my car back? Just let me get my car back. Well, Anna, let me tell you how you get it back. You turn okay. on your radio to 92 okay. KSJO. It's Lamont and Tonelli. You're on the radio. It's Dirty Friday. Lionel said to give you a call this morning. Oh, my God. Good how morning. you doing? <laughs> I'm going to kill that guy. <laughs> but make sure you get oh. your car back first before you kill him. You're going to leave him hanging in jail just so you get your car back? Well, I, I still don't know if he's my boyfriend. <laughs> what if he's not your boyfriend anymore? I, we'll have to discuss that later. Well, I, Anna, 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 did you change your story from letting him borrow your car to stealing your car? Oh, my God. <laughs> Anna, say hi to Lionel. You're on the air. It's Dirty Friday. You hold on. We have a little something for you, okay? Okay. Oh, man. Wow, did she sell him up the river? Line and sinker. What a great way to start the morning off. The Burns on Dirty Friday. Hello. Good morning. I'm looking for Steve. Please. Hi, Steve. How you doing? This is uh, Harold Scrotum calling from the uh, apartment, and I'm calling in regards to your son, Brett. Yes? Uh, it seems that uh, there was a, uh, uh, a raucous party at your home. Do you live at 642 in San Jose? Yes. Well, sir, there was a, a report for us to uh, respond to a party last night, and uh, we showed up at your residence. Yeah. And we have your son in custody. Um, there are numerous violations on the scene. And, um, sir, are you all right? Uh, that, go ahead. Go ahead. There are numerous violations on the scene, underage drinking, 
And uh, the uh, first time the police uh, responded to uh, calls of disturbances, they didn't keep it in check. And as a result, um, uh, it was just a, a very ugly affair, sir. Bastard. Excuse me? Ah, oh, that little bastard. I went over this with him before I came on this trip and told him that this better not happen. So have you had problems with your son before, sir? Well, I've had problems, but nothing like this. And then he picks this beautiful time to do this. I'm over. I've, I've still got... No, no, I couldn't. Uh, where exactly are you, sir? I'm in Hawaii. I'm on a week's vacation. I've only been over here four days. I've got another three days going. Now, is it possible for you to cut the sh uh, trip short, sir, and come back and, and pick your son up out of the juvenile hall? Well, do I have to pick him up? Can I send somebody down there? Well, sir, you're the guardian. You must sign over. Uh, you've got to pick him up. I have a brother there in San Jose. Can't he come over there and pick him up, take care of him? We, we'd have to get the paperwork to you in Hawaii, and then you fax it back to us with uh, a fax of your driver's license and credible uh, identification. Oh, God. God, that little bastard. Now, did you have any idea that there'd be underage drinking on your premises? Well, it was kind of a thought in the back of my mind. I didn't think he would pull it while I'm over here, though, but obviously that's not true. Now, now, Steve, there's one other thing I'd like to tell your son, Brett. He's 16 years of age, is that correct? Yeah. And Brett also has a pretty good sense of humor because he said to give his dad a call in Hawaii. It's Lamont Antonelli on KSJO. <laughs> You're on the radio. It's Dirty Friday. Oh, sure. He's laughing now. Oh, God. I thought I was going to have to book a flight. Uh, you know what the weather is over here? It's sunny and hot, I would imagine. Just, say, just leave his little ass in there. Sure. Brett told us that you had a long talk with him. He said, let's dick, it with, let's dick with him on this one. Uh, I, went, went, I went over this with him three times. And I said, you, you wouldn't dare do anything while I'm over here. Hey, Steve, you hold on, okay? We'll have a little something for you when you get back. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your vacation. I think we woke him up out of a deep... What's the time over in Hawaii anyways? Was like, it like three hours earlier? Oh, it's like uh, beautiful. Four o'clock in the morning back yes. there? Out of a deep sleep. <laughs> Something like that? I'll yeah, tell you what, that yes, guy was yes. crapping his pants. He was <laughs> crapping that up, Sully. <laughs> Are they ever going to fix that problem? Hello? Good morning. I'm looking for uh, Jeanette, please. This is Jeanette. Hi, Jeanette. How you doing? This is uh, Ray Warkham calling from uh, Metallica. What? Hi, how are Hi, you this morning? I'm fine. Good. I hope I didn't wake you up. No, no, no. No, no, no. I wasn't. I wasn't asleep. Okay, great. Uh, listen, I'm calling you. I, I had your number passed to me by uh, by a couple of uh, guys that were part of the road crew. Oh my God! Really? Yes. And uh, they said that you're very interested in meeting the band. Oh, I am. Now, do you have tickets yet for this Sunday? I do. Okay, great. Uh, because uh, now, do you have backstage passes? No. Well, I may have some backstage passes for you here, Jeanette. However, oh, my God. Now, now, however, I've got a question to ask you. Yeah. Um, what I'd like you to do is show up before the show, okay? Okay. And uh, that way we can kind of get you backstage uh -huh. at Shoreline and uh, get you on the bus. Yeah. And now, do you have, like, um, uh, frilly lingerie or stuff like that to wear for us? What? Do you, do you have, like, a G-string or, or, like, a cutout bra with uh, holes in the nipples? For what? Well, the guys on the crew, before you meet the band, would like to, to meet you, too. Oh, I don't know about that. that I didn't think it, anything like that would happen. Well, no, you see, before you get to meet the band, you've got to work your way through the crew. What do you mean, work my way through the crew? Well, you have to get to know the crew a bit. Like how? Well, you have to really get friendly with uh, one or two of the members of the road crew, or three or four. How friendly? Well, we would like you to, first off, wear your uh, cutout bra with a, If you don't have one, head down to Victoria's Secret or, like, one of the sex stores. You're kidding, right? Well, no. If you want to meet the band, the road crew has to test you first. I don't know about that. Well, now, do you want to meet the band, Lars and the boys? I do, but I don't want to do that. Well, all you have to do is put on a little show for them, then. Did you call Debbie already? Did I call who? Debbie. No, I'm, I've just got your number and I'm calling you direct. I don't think I can do that. 
I'd like the backstage passes, but I don't think I can do a little show for the crew. Well, would you like to get intimate with one of them then? One? Maybe. What will that get me? Well, that's going to get you on the air, baby. It's Lamont and Tonelli on 92.3 KSJO. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jeanette, you're Good on morning. the air. It's Dirty Friday. <laughs> oh. One, maybe? <laughs> yeah. You know, hey, Jeanette, there's three of us here in the studio. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, she's not putting on a show, but she'll get in the with one, maybe. <laughs> Jeanette, you hold on the line, okay? Okay. Because we may have a little wow. something for you. <laughs> this is turning into what would you do for backstage passes? <laughs> That's kind of cool. <laughs> one maybe. Well, one maybe. <laughs> I'm not going to put on a show for everybody, but <laughs> we'll give us spooch toe. <laughs> spooch. Yes, it's spooch. Spooch. That's, thank you That's very spooch. much. <laughs> I'm not going to put spooch. on a show. Spooch. <laughs> but intimate yes, one, one maybe. maybe. Hello. Good morning. Is Rich there, please? Yeah. Who's this? Hi, my name is Billy from the Rainbow Society. The Rainbow Society. What's yeah. this all about? Well, yes, sir, I'm calling you in regards to, um, like, to take the liberty to talk to you this morning about the uh, Rainbow Society. And uh, I don't have time for this, man. I'm getting ready for work. No, no, Ruth, Ruth hold on. I'm a, I'd like to take the opportunity to talk to you. I'm a member of the organization that your son Jeff belongs to. Jeff? Yes, your son Jeff. Uh-huh. We're honoring him with a very special night coming up. You are? Yes, sir. Well, what's and Jeff up to? Well, what, what, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm making uh, sure that his closest friends and, uh, and family are invited to uh, our acknowledgement night. Well, what did Jeff do? Well, he, he's up for the Flaming Amos Award. Oh, wow. The Flaming, we, see, what we ha every year we honor members of our society for some of the things they've done for our group. And uh, he is this year's proud recipient of the Flaming Amos, Amos Award. Jeff is so secretive. He doesn't share anything with us anymore. Why did you pick my son? Well, your son has been a driving force behind our group. Oh, what does exactly does your group stand for? Oh, the Rainbow Society does a lot of great things. Uh, such as? Well, well, for instance, he was the one that was responsible for, for picking out all the dresses and everything for the parade last year. Parade? Dresses? For the Gay Pride Parade. What is this? Your son is one of our founding members. And I think the Flaming Anus Award could not go to a better person. Wait, what? Who is this? My name is Billy. Billy? What? Do you have the right number, Billy? Yes, your name, your son is Jeff. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Well, we, we picked your number up from his, from his directory. Uh, and your, your son was responsible for bringing the KY jelly to the family meetings. What? <laughs> Who is this? Rich. This is Lamont Tonelli calling from KSJO Radio. Oh. <laughs> your, your, son, your son is getting the Flaming <laughs> Anus Award from us this morning. Guys, it's too early for this. <laughs> You're on the radio, bro. I was going to have to spank him, but I thought he might have liked it. <laughs> now you sound like a good guy, Rich. <laughs> oh, man. Rich, did we get your heart beating a little bit uh, this morning? You got, you got me wide awake for a Friday. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> you hold on, Rich. You got a little something for you, okay? Oh, um, right. by the way, your son was responsible for bringing the KY jelly to the meetings. <laughs> and you should see what he did with that flaming anus award. Oh, guys. Hold on the line, all right? Uh, that was beautiful. <laughs> Sounded like he had a pretty good the sense of humor, is, though. What I liked is the flaming anus slipped by him, so oh, to yeah. speak, about three, four times before. <laughs> huh? Hold on here. Wow, well, I didn't realize he was up for an award. <laughs> Dirty Friday, 1-800-575-KSJO. Oh, oh. Hello? Good morning. I'm looking for Irma. Please. This is Irma. Hi, Irma. How are you this morning? I'm fine, thank you. Good. I'm calling from... Uh, group and I'm calling in regards to your application for an apartment with us yes um, now you, you had talked to our uh, manager in our uh, in our uh, local office is that correct yes I spoke to the on-site property manager okay uh, I'm afraid we've got a bit of a problem because we have let him go we've reviewed his work and as a result we're reviewing all the applications from the last 60 days Okay, so, so what does that mean to me? Well, it seems that um, you had an application with us for an apartment. Is that correct? I'm scheduled to move in on February 1st. Well, not anymore. Um, <sighs> we've reviewed all the applications. It seems that, and that's why we got rid of our on-site manager. <sighs> we, he had accepted too many applications. 
And okay. the vacancy, as you well know, around the Bay Area, the vacancy rate is at a staggering pace right oh, now. Oh, I know. It took me two months to find that place, and he gave, it was on his verbal approval that I gave notice that my, to my current landlord. Uh -huh. Now, I am scheduled to move in February 1st, and I expect to be moving into the apartment that I was shown that day. Well, you see, this, now that's the problem, because now he gave you a verbal approval, so you have just verified for me that you do not have this in writing. Is that correct? He told me that your policy was, because I argued this whole thing with him. I wanted it all in writing. Uh-huh. Uh, he told me that as long as a lease agreement was signed prior to my moving in, I could even come in the day before. Well, and then I would be given my keys at the time I pay my first month's rent, but I've already given well, you guys a deposit. Well, it's mismanagement like that that has resulted in him not being with I the company. I, I, it's not my mismanagement. Well, no, that's why, that's why he's no longer with the company. Ma'am, Irma, we don't, have, we don't have the amount of apartments to go around from the applications that he's accepting. Well, that, that's not my problem. Well, it kind of is because your application was denied when we took a look at all the applications. We found someone more suitable for our, for our community. Excuse me? More well, suitable. Yes, your application was denied. We have uh, a number of other tenants that were uh, more uh, suitable uh, for uh, our well, community. What is, what is suitable? Well, what do more, you mean by somebody more suitable than me? Is it because I'm a single mom? No, it has nothing to do, ma'am, with you. We have a lot of single mothers in our community. Well, I noticed that day, and I even brought this up to your manager, that there, were, there was maybe one kid that I saw. Well, that's, I don't know what time you were there, but we have a lot of single mothers in our complex. That has nothing to do with it. Then clarify for me, please, what is more suitable? Well, we, we, we just found a few more people that were more suitable for our complex. That their application were, was in there, and we, we accepted it, and as a result, you don't have a place. Uh, you know what? This, this doesn't work for me. I'd, I'd like you to define more suitable. What, what, is, what is different about my application? Could it be my race? Could it be that I'm Mexican? You're, you're Mex you, you, Irma, is it, uh, because you're Mexican? Is that what you think? What, well, Irma, what if that's what you think it is, Irma, if that's what you think it is, that's what it is. Then it's because you're Mexican. I'm gonna sue the shit out of you guys. Irma, it's because you're Mexican. That's why. Oh, this is an outrage. And, and Irma, and, and Irma, let me just say this: your boyfriend is Jose. We don't like the cut of his gib either. What? We don't like the fact that Jose told us to give you a call and say dick with you. It's Lamont Tanelli on Dirty Friday. Oh, You're on the air, Irma. Oh, that, God. Want to see us? Get the hell out of me. Irma. Irma, you still have your apartment. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Irma, hold on the line, okay? Yeah. Oh, sure. she is not happy. A bit of a temper on her. <laughs> wow. I would. I would. <laughs> Would have a bit of a temper? <laughs> yes. Have you ever been oh, denied? Oh, the guy who laughs at everything is going to have a temper. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Raymond stinging burn. That was beautiful. Yeah, it was. That was absolutely beautiful. Did you see the button? After she goes, a Mexican? Let me press that button. Boy, that's your really cool off the, off the handle. Hello? Morning. Is Tori there? This is Tori. This is Tori. Yeah, my, my name is Ahmed from uh, the Limo Services. You're booked for the weekend. And, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, for the wedding, yeah. Yeah, we have a problem, but uh, uh, just a little problem. What do, you, what do you mean, a problem? What kind of problem? Well, it seems that uh, we are overbooked, and uh, one of our limos is involved in an accident, so uh, we might not be able to uh, render the services. Wait, wait one second. I booked this limo months and months and months ago. This is for a wedding. I know. We, we have can't a, do this. We have a system of uh, first come, first serve, and uh, uh, it seems that uh, uh, you, are, you are in that role, but we won't be able to, to, uh, to, to cater for you. Oh, what, what? You only have we, two we, limos or something? No, I mean, we, we have... I booked this months and months ago. It's not like I called last week. I can't believe that you don't have a limo for me. Well, the lim the, we have limited limos, and we have a, we are overbooked this weekend, and we cannot help. We cannot help you. I'm sorry. Well, why? Why is it me that's getting shunted like this? I Actually, mean, why am I the one who's not getting a limo? Can't I, 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 you I, I, tell I, someone else they're not getting a limo? I've gone through this this sales uh, sales contract here, and it seems that you have you you are paying half price. Um, is 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 there anybody uh, you know in this company or something like that? Yeah, my friend Gary's there. He's the one who arranged this whole thing. Oh, for me. see, that's the uh, employee discount, and we normally give this discount when we are we have a lot of uh, automobiles on the road. And 
I'm sorry. I think we won't be able to do to do to do any other services to you. Now, wait, 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 wait. Now, before you say another thing, I want to talk to Gary. Can you put Gary on the phone? Gary's not here at, at, at this moment. He's but, not there. Uh, yeah, you take my. Is he away. out on a job? Yeah, he's still working with us, but he's not here at the moment. Well, I'm a little upset, and I don't want to. I don't I want know, anything I... to be settled until I talk to Gary because he's the one who set this up for me. Not what? What did you say your name was? Ahmed. Ahmed, not you, Ahmed, and and I, I think that I really need to deal with this with him. Um, yeah, I'm 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 the authority here, so if you want to deal it, deal it with me. Otherwise, uh, if you want to deal with Gary, okay, go ahead and deal with Gary. What do you mean you're the authority? I'm I'm his boss. Well, maybe then he needs to talk to you, and I sh I'm going to talk to him. I'm, I'm going to call him at home, and he'll be in touch with you because this is not right. I mean, I booked it months and months ago, and it's not fair to me. My sister has been looking forward to her perfect wedding for six months now, and this is three days before. I mean, two God, it's tomorrow. If you want to talk to Gary, go ahead and talk to Gary. See you later, alligator. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> what are you talking <laughs> See you, See you later, later alligator. Later. You hung up on her. What kind of business practice is that? <laughs> so we were supposed to tell her she's on the air. <laughs> talk to talk to Gary. See you later, <laughs> alligator. <laughs> okay, Gary. Now we have a little pitfall here when we gave it to Sully. So Gary, if you're listening and she's calling you, do not answer your phone. Whatever you do, we've got to call her back and yes, stick with will. her. <laughs> Don't tell her we won't go talk to Gary then. Uh, <laughs> so, see you later, alligator. <laughs> what kind of advice was that? Talk to you, Sully. Yeah. Hello. Hi, can I talk to Tori, please? This is Tori. Tori, I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm Ahmed, the guy who called you from the limo services. I know. Yeah, um, I'm really sorry about what is happening to you, but, uh, you know, uh, the results I gave you are genuine and, uh, um, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I can help you, though. Well, look, I tried to get in touch with Gary, and he's not home, so... I'm just, I'm going to pay full price. Just put me with full price, give me the limo, and everything's fine. Well, I, I don't, we don't have anything at full price, and since you paid half price, um, I, can, I can suggest an alternative for you. Well, you don't have any, you, what do you mean you don't have anything? What are you talking about? Well, I have... Oh, you, oh, you, you mean you want to set me up, like, with another company or something? No, I want to... I, I want to... I call them, and they're all booked, but if you know someone, you, let's do that. I want to offer an alternative, but it might cost you a little bit extra. And you say you don't care about that, right? Well, if, if, if as long as it works, what is it? I can provide you a house, and uh, it's roomy, very clean, and it carries more Excuse people. Me? Yes, I can, I can... Oh, I can. my God! You have got... This is for a wedding! What are you talking about? Oh, oh, <laughs> you know, you know, it, it serves the same heart. purpose. Yeah, it, it serves the a same heart. purpose, though, yes. No! No, yes, no, yes. No, no, no. <laughs> give the hearse to the high school kids who are going to some dance. I'm not taking a hearse for this. Tori, Tori, it's Lamont and Tonelli calling from KSJO Radio. And Sully, you're on the air. It's KSJO. It's Dirty Friday. Tori? Tori? Are you there? I, I can't get <laughs> Tori. Gary said to give you a call. You're getting the deal through Gary? This this is part Tori? of the deal with Gary. Tori? Did Tori? <laughs> we get the discount and get the Tori? <laughs> Thanks, Gary. <laughs> Tori, you got your discount, but this came along with it. Was it worth it? Oh. I think so. All right. I hope your sister has a good wedding. Hold on the line, okay? Oh. Wow. Listen, hey, see you later, alligator. Oh, Sully no, no. <laughs> thinks she was laughing and crying at the end. Oh. <laughs> what a great Dirty Friday. Oh. Embedding with Baba. Hello? Good morning. I'm looking for uh, Carol, please. This is her. Hi, Carol. This is uh, Dick Strokett from uh, your child's kindergarten class. Yes. And I'm calling in regards to your son, Brandon. Is everything okay? Yeah, well, yeah, everything is okay. He's fine and everything, so don't worry about that. But we've had another problem with a disciplinary problem here. What happened? Well, we, uh, we, we caught him vandalizing some school property. And uh, he was writing something on the wall. What? And uh, he was writing something on the wall. And as a result, we'd like you to come down and pick him up. What was he writing on the wall? Uh, Carol, it's a little embarrassing for me to get into right now, but uh, uh, needless to say, 
We, we can't have stuff like this going on at school over and over and over again. What happened? What, what did he write? Well, Carol, if you must know, he wrote, My mama is a sucker on the wall. Are you sure Brandon wrote that? Yeah, yeah. One of our supervisors saw him finishing it on the wall. Well, he got that at school, no doubt. Well, he's saying he got this from home. He said what? We don't talk like that at our house. Well, when we questioned them, he said that he heard his father walking around the house going, my mama is a sucker. No, that's impossible. Um, well, when you come down here, we're going to have to talk about this because we've got to get down to the bottom of all these problems we're having with your son. Yeah, we, we do. He's had a few problems at home, but nothing like that. Do you have any idea where he'd get such language from? I don't. Or are you indeed a sucker? Excuse me. Are you known to be sucking? No, I don't like to be talked to that way. Well, how, how's about being talked to like this? Charlie said to give you a call, Lamont and Tonelli on Dirty Friday. Oh, you're... I'm going to choke you guys. <laughs> I'm going to choke you. You're on the radio. Oh, you're no. on the radio, you big dick. All right, that's all. <laughs> well, she's a big fan of Yes. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Where's the sensor? Sully, you got a little confused. You're supposed to fade my mic when I say the second word. <laughs> <laughs> you make me laugh too, man. <laughs> She's a big fan of Dick Martin. Mm -hmm. Dick Martin? Dick Martin fan. <laughs> Watch Dick Martin all the time on TV. A Nickelodeon. Ah, <laughs> uh, dirty that was Friday. A blooper. 1 800 575 KSJL. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Is Sean there, please? This is he. Hi, Sean. How are you doing? This is Mr. Uh, Strogan calling from uh, Cablevision. Yeah. And I'm uh, calling into our investigation regarding your home and an illegal black box picking up our cable signal. Well, I don't have any black box. Well, sir, apparently the decoder box that you have in your home, in your apartment, is, uh, is an illegal box. We sent an inspector there earlier on this week. Well, I didn't. Inspector, no inspector came to my house. Well, your your landlord let us into your apartment, sir. And you do indeed have an illegal cable box. Well, I don't... Now, Sean... How, how do you get permission for, to come in my house? Sean is uh, completely above board. We were doing some repair work at your apartment oh. complex. Now, sir, do you deny that you have this cable box because we have it on, we have a witness that one was set up in your apartment. Our inspector was there. Sean, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Now, do you know the fine and the penalty? This is, this is a felony, sir. Well, I just... You're looking at a $3,000 fine and a mark on your record. You could go to court over this. Well, what happens? What, can I well, Sean, pay for this? Or? Sean, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to cut you a deal, okay? We'll charge you on your cable starting this month for the cable vision and for the cable that you're receiving. You must turn over the illegal uh, decoder. And if you supply us with the name of the person that sold you the box, there will be no forthcoming penalty. Oh, I can't do that. I can't give you the, give you the name. I'll turn the box over. No, sir, sir you've got to give us the name. We've got to crack down on this. This is a crime. Now, if you don't, you're looking at we're going to we're going to prosecute you and take you to court, and make you an example. If I give you the name, can it be anonymous? I, and can I get a guarantee that I'm not going to have to testify against him? Well, sir, we we can't guarantee that because. It's obvious if we, if we have a case against someone selling illegal decoders, you may be used as a material witness. We'll subpoena you on that. Uh, Sean, Sean, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Sean, well, you've got to make a decision. What are you going to do? All right, I'll tell you who it is. All right, Sean, and you say it loud and clear because the guys at work, including the guy that sold you the box... Set you up for this. It's Lamont Tonelli on Dirty Friday. You're on the air, bro. <laughs> Hello? 
Now that's a good way to get the fire going on Friday morning. <laughs> Sean, Sean, the guys at work said you bought this box at work, and they wanted to sting you. Hey, we're all coming over to watch the fight tomorrow night. Yeah. Guess I'll, uh, guess I'll be going on vacation for a little while. <laughs> Don't worry, Sean, your secret's good with us. Sully, shred yes. this guy's number. Okay. okay, okay. Sean, you hold on the line, okay? We, we know right. nothing. Yeah, we know nothing on this one. <laughs> All right, so go away. Oh, man, it sounds like well, he was crapping in his he, pants. He, he didn't know what to say. To go, do I have to hand it over? <laughs> he was ready to sell his friend out, though. I do not do listen, boys. Listen, I do not listen, dirt road. listen, 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 listen. I don't. I, 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 listen, uh, you were giving me signal. This is very hey. shocking to me because I thought you looked. You, you, you looked like you were gay. John, I never dropped nothing. I never bent over to pick it up. I don't know what signals I was giving you. I mean, I was expecting a phone call back from Chris. How did you get my phone number? I told you I picked up the uh, application, and I, I, I thought you were very attractive, and I took the phone number from the application. Well, that's sweet. Um, well, Would you like to go for drinks? Not particularly. I'd really like to pack you. <laughs> Who is this? This is Lamont Tonelli calling from 92.3 KSJO. <laughs> Hey, Alex. You're, you're on the air. It's Dirty Friday. Your, your girlfriend, Sherry, said to give you a call. Who set me up? Uh, your, Sherry, girlfriend, your girlfriend, Sherry. And I think, oh. the guys, I think the guys at work were in on it, too, because I hear them laughing in the background. Oh, no. <laughs> what, did, did she let everybody know at work in the office that yeah. said that we were going to give you a call? Yeah. Do you have anything to say? Well, I, I was shocked. I thought for the first time in my life I've actually been propositioned by a guy. <laughs> Hey, 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 you were looking forward to getting that return call about another interview, weren't hey, you? I'll, I'll, tell you? I'll tell you what. You hold on. We'll get you a KSJO t-shirt, and I believe we have a box of fudge. Uh, <laughs> you guys are really special. <laughs> you just pack that fudge away. Save Sully, it for a later date. Yeah. Sully, what happened to that fudge? Did you pack that fudge away for that call? Yes, I did. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Is that on tape? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so believe you me, we'll have it ready for you. 